pretzel warmers. I found this one when I was in Germany. It's a pork knuckle. We're gonna spice it up with some traditional German spices. We've got juniper berries here. Uh, we've got caraway seeds, fennel seeds. We're gonna finish the skin off with some um, garlic and some vinegar. Um, bay leaf's gonna go in the cooking broth. We're gonna get it all together with some beer. First of all, we're just gonna score up the skin, ready to go for the crackle. Set it away in the fridge for 24 hours and come back and cook them up. So I've just put all the spices in here that I wanted to grind up. You sort of can do this with your uh, on the fly. You don't have a muddler or you don't have a, a blender. So just chuck them in your pepper shaker. I've just emptied it out of the peppercorns. We're just gonna grind it up in a bar. So you notice when you grind this up, there'll be a familiar flavor going on there. It's the juniper. It's one of the main aromatics in gin. So if you're having flashbacks, hopefully they're good ones. So I've got the rub all here ready to go. The junipers, I've just added the salt to that. Now I'm just gonna cut the pork off, score the skin, and then we're gonna get that on the, on the fleshy parts. When you're cutting this, you just wanna make sure that you run around the top of it. If your butcher hasn't done so for you, you can ask the guys at Super Butcher to do it, but this is just gonna stop it. When the uh, skin cooks, it'll shrink, and if you don't release this piece, it'll tear, and you won't get a nice pork crackling. So just run the knife around just the top part, and just score the skin however you like. I'm just gonna go like a traditional diamond on it. You can just prick it as well, just stab it a little bit. As long as you pierce through, you just wanna make sure you're just cutting the skin and a little bit of the fat that's underneath and you're not penetrating into the meat. So now I've got that all scored up. This rub is just gonna go on the meaty stuff and then we're just gonna put the, um, the vinegar on the outside. So I've gonna pump the garlic in with the rub and that'll be enough for both of these uh, pork hocks. So. And that's really just gonna flavor the meat overnight, like a marinade, really. Try and get in there as much as you can all over the meaty stuff, and like I said, keep the skin clean. All right, so I've seasoned up both those pork hocks there. It's gonna pat off any of the excess. So just tip it in, rub it in. You do this with any pork roast, really. It's a good way to get the crackling on it. It's really that drying out of the skin that's really gonna get it to crackle up. All right, so those are ready. Finish them off tomorrow. All right, it's been about 12, 14 hours. We've had this in the fridge overnight, drying out. The pork knuckle, so we're just gonna do the braise on it now. So we're gonna cook this in the oven for about three hours. Just gonna chop up some vegetables, do some a side of braised cabbage, some mashed potatoes. Just a rough cut on your vegetables. This is just a little bit of a way to get some depth to your braising stock that we're gonna use for the sauce later. We'll strain these off, so don't be too panicked about what you, how you cut them up. Just straight in a braising pan. Anything with high edges, it's gonna hold. The liquid we're putting in is about a litre, a litre and a half. So anything that's gonna hold that. Now we're just gonna put our pork hocks straight on top of that. All right, so we're just gonna scoop in some garlic. You can use whole garlic as well. Um, just chuck your junipers in there. Holes fine. A little bit of caraway seed. Bay leaf. A little bit of beer. You want about 500 mils. And also chicken stock. 500 to 750 mils. And that's just going to tick over nicely at about 150 degrees in the oven. Because the pork hock is a very well used muscle, so you need it, it needs time and some slow cooking to tenderize. And then we'll just Cover that. I'll put a bit of baking paper down there first, just because aluminium foil and a long cooking duration will start sticking to your meat. So you just want a little bit of a protective layer there. Just make sure it's nice and sealed up. And I've preheated my oven to 200. So when I put this in, I'll turn it back to 150 and we'll check it after two and a half hours. Just poke it with a knife and it goes through nice and uh, easy. It should be ready to come out and we'll finish it off in the oven, dry out that skin again and get a nice crackle. The pork hock's been in for about four hours. They're a little bit bigger, so they took about an hour longer than I thought they would. Um, if you're ever wondering, how are you gonna know when something like a pork hock is ready? You wanna take it to about 95 to 96 degrees, and that's gonna be just enough for it to be cooked and just before it falls apart. All right, so lift them out. Just be careful, should be a bit hot. Lift them up from the bottom, the bone under there. Straight on the wire rack over here. You want them to be standing up so that the skin gets as much coverage from the heat as possible. So we're gonna take these, 
Chuck them in the oven at about 180 fan forced, close to 200 not fan forced, and it'll probably take around about an hour. Before I do that, I'll just pat them dry, and then chuck them in. So the pork knuckle was in for about three and a half hours, four hours, braising. Then I took it out of the juices, put it on the wire rack here, and dry roasted it for another 45 minutes till it crackled up. Should be able to hear that here. Skin's nice and crackly, so we're gonna be able to serve that up. The meat inside will be, is about 98 degrees, so it'll pull real nicely. And I've just got here the pan juices that I've reduced. That had the beer and the caraway, the juniper, and the stock in it. I reduced that down. There was about two, two and a half liters in it when I finished cooking, and I've dropped that down to about a cup and a half. And then I just thickened it with a cornflour slurry. And it was beautiful. I didn't even need to season it. Wow. And there you have it, German pork knuckle. And that's one way to warm yourself this winter.